So I'm here at Eurobike 2024, and this is a new DJI e-bike. E-mountain bike to be precise, and I'm gonna dive through what makes it different than every other e-mountain bike here, because there's a lot of them here, as well as what makes it different from a, well, drone, which is what I usually review of DJI's products, so drones and action cameras and stuff like that. They've got a huge stand here, right up there in fact, uh, but it's not just named DJI anymore, there's something else there. So let's park this thing and then walk through it a little bit. So if you're new to this channel, you'll know this is kind of a weird, quirky intersection for me. I normally review drones and action camera, including DJI's products, and I normally review other cycling sports tech. That's what I do. I'm a cyclist, triathlete, runner, all that kind of stuff. So to have this thing be from DJI was not on my bingo card when I came to Eurobike this week. I'm going to walk you through what it is and what it isn't and what DJI is saying, uh, keeping in mind that my time with this is just like doing loops around the convention center here. So the thing to understand about this bike is there's actually two different like sets of things going on here. Uh, number one is the motor system, basically the e-bike motor system that is from DJI and it's called Avanox. And that's the whole piece that basically powers the bike, including the battery and the different battery options and, and all that goodness. And then there is the bike itself from a made up company called Amflow. That company is quote a incubator of DJI's. I asked if it's owned by DJI or DJI subsidiary. Uh, I, I can see they were all visibly nervous when I asked that question. So officially, no, unofficially, of course it is. It's basically a subsidiary of DJI owned by the same sort of thing. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's separate so that it can be separate. Um, so if you were to go and buy this whole thing, you wouldn't technically buy it on DJI's website, you would buy it on Amflow's website. But the motor itself is DJI because they expect to sell the motor to other e-bike companies. All these companies that are here, they wanna sell the motor to them in the same way that Bosch sells e-bike motors to other companies as well. Oh, hey, and a quick note, if you're finding this video interesting or useful, I've got plenty more sports technology goodness coming from Eurobike here. So definitely whack that subscribe button so you don't miss any of it. So let's talk about the motor first. Uh, it is definitely more powerful than the vast majority of e-bike motors on the market today uh, and there's basically both the standard mode as well as the boost mode but it is one single motor system despite some rumors to the contrary it's just only one system it's the batteries that are different between the different bikes now it spikes up to 120 newton meters of force which is fair bit more than most other units, not most, so virtually every other unit on the market today, uh, which is typically around 85 to 95 newton meters of force. What that essentially means is if you were going up a steeper hill and you were especially a heavier rider, this would give you more force to power through that. The thing to understand about e-bikes is that you do have to pedal to go somewhere. Uh, you can't just simply sit there and have it go somewhere. It's not gonna work that way. A standard e-bike does require pedaling. And the point of the motor is to amplify your pedaling. So it amplifies it by 100% or 200% or up to 400% in the case of DJI. So that means if I was putting out 200 watts of power as if I was a normal cyclist, that would be up to 800 watts of power from this, allowing me to go up those steeper gradients. And so having that extra power in DJI's motor is something that could be appealing to some riders. In terms of the battery sizes, there are two different battery sizes. Uh, they are inside the frame. They are considered non-removable from a design standpoint. Obviously, if you're a third-party company making a bike and incorporating DJI system into that, then they're, of course, inside the frame to remove as you see fit. But from a consumer perspective, uh, they're not removable, they're not swappable, etc. Those battery sizes and charging times are pretty much par for the course out there. A little bit faster on the charging times in some scenarios, but uh, they're not like dramatically different than what's out there today. The biggest difference is frankly the display system right here. Uh, so the display system, I'm just gonna kind of show this to you in real time right there. So the display system here is actually built on a DJI Action 4 camera display. So it's a touchscreen display, I can swipe up, I can tap things, data recording, and the data recording is arguably the most interesting bit here. Every time you start pedaling this bike, it's gonna record your rides. You can turn it off, DJI noted you can turn this off if you want to, uh, but it records your rides, it has GPS in there, it has LTE in there, and it's gonna go ahead and record all that data, including your power data and even your heart rate data. I actually went ahead and broadcast my heart rate from my watch uh, to this. I paired it as a heart rate sensor and you're good to go. From there, you'll see all that data in the DJI app afterwards. It's a new dedicated app dedicated to this particular drivetrain, and you'll be able to sync it to Strava as well as be able to export out a fit file. That's notable because just last weekend there was a quirky little update to the DJI Action 4 which allowed you to import a fit file and do overlays within the DJI Mimo app. Uh, if you're not familiar with fit files, in the sporting world, they are the equivalent of like GPX files, but with all the actual data you care about. Industry standard, every single watch out there uses fit files across the board to transmit data. And so it's interesting to see DJI adopting that and going ahead and putting it in here, as well as their app, linking up to third-party apps like Strava, et cetera. On this display, the display, of course, is powered and charged by the battery right there. Uh, it's controlled by the buttons up here. You've got ability to go ahead and change the data pages by pressing this right 
right hand button just simply iterates through them. In the left hand side here, you got your ability to change your e-bike assistance mode. Uh, so you can have it off entirely, which means you do all your own pedaling, um, or you can go into auto mode, which is gonna smartly transition between all the different modes that it has there. So, so for example, between eco and trail uh, and turbo, etc. Turbo, when it's enabled, is enabled for 30 seconds at a time and gives you up to 120 newton meters of force as opposed to the, the regular 110 newton meters. And at the end of 30 seconds, it'll beep and say, hey, your 30 seconds is over and you're back to kind of your regular auto mode. Auto mode is gonna use all the sensors in this. Uh, they basically said they took all their sensors from their drones and stuck them in the internals of this to do a better job of controlling the motor when you're going up steep climbs. Now there's, there's no steep climbs here, so I can't really validate that. The folks at the booth, the DJI folks that are mountain bikers, like normal, legit mountain bikers, they said this was insanity in terms of what they were to throw it at that they could never do uh, on their own mountain bike. That's generally the case for most e-mountain bikes, but they said this is well beyond what they've seen in other cases. So I'll have to take their word for it for now, and maybe I'll go out on some legit trails at some point with this thing. In terms of the other e-bike components here, they're pretty much the same thing that you would see on other e-bikes in this particular price range. Uh, so you've got SRAM transmission there, two different levels, depending on which bike that you're talking about from Amflow. You've got the Magura brakes on there. You've got your Fox shocks on there. Like all that stuff is run of the mill stuff that's already been announced and released and is available to any e-bike manufacturer that today. So that gets back to the question of how do you buy this thing? Like, who are you buying it from? What's it called? All that kind of stuff. Again, the bike is called Amflow, and there are two different effective models of this. There's a base model and a pro model. The pro model is effectively this blackish color here, though it's supposed to be more glossy in a final paint job. And then the base model is a silver one that you're seeing some images of as well. Uh, there are two different price points. They're targeting roughly 7,000 euros for the base model and about 10,000 bucks for these higher end model. Those are, those are pricey e-mountain bikes, to be very, very clear. That's on the upper end of the e-mountain bike spectrum here. Um, e-mountain bikes go down to, I mean, generally like the, the bottom of that barrel is at like 4,000, give or take. Um, there are some that are cheaper, but you're mostly talking kind of the base is like 4,000. This is on the absolute premium end of that for sure. But if I look at those torque specs and the power specs, they are at the top end, if not, not they thought, they are at beyond that top end of those power specs from what's out there today. So you're effectively gaining those things for that higher end price point. Is it worth it for most riders? I don't know. I haven't ridden this thing in anything more than loops around here, so I really can't tell you there, but uh, it is definitely an interesting entrant to the marketplace uh, to see DJI go into this area here. I asked them what else they could do with this display. Like, is there going to be better integration with their action cameras or with their other things out there? Like, what if I could control the drone from here on this display? Like, that'd be cool. There's LTE in there. Like, you could do all sorts of interesting things with the LTE models on the drones, etc. They said basically like stay tuned for all of that. But as of when they start shipping these bikes in the fall, it'll be pretty much like you see here in terms of features and stuff like that. The integrations they talk about with other DJI products will come at some point down the road. Anyways, I figured people would find this interesting. I don't normally have those two worlds intersect between my drone world, if you will, and my bike world, uh, except when I'm flying drones after myself as bikes, but that's the closest those two get. From a tech standpoint, those two companies, like there's nothing in those two spheres that intersects except apparently now. So with that, if you found this video interesting or useful, go ahead and whack that like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. Have a good one.